Hello and welcome back to my home renovation, I am Christian and on today's video is still about restoring the kitchen. This is the second last video about the kitchen before I start a new project. I just had installed a wall oven and today I'm going to build around it. On the top I have two doors and on the bottom I have two drawers. I won't say more and let's start the video. So I just got my uh, wall uh, oven installed there. Um, I'm going to start to keep building around. Uh, so I have this piece of wood to go across. Like that. I already done some pocket hole on the back. And uh, I have to screw that in. And I can also uh, um, start to figure out how to do the the, uh, the inside. I have to build a frame on the bottom, the flooring of my cabinets. So I have also two wood strips, the same thing. It's going to go there. So I will be able, that one is going to be more somewhere over there. So I can start uh, working on that. Put in this thing. So I'm going to put the uh, this piece of wood here. It's just a bit too big. Between the oven. French. The idea is just to don't get it too close like that if I need to remove the oven. Perfect. That's going to make the job a little bit easier. So to make this one go flat, try something. I want to be flush with uh, to get it flush here. To attach this wood to the vertical beam, I pre-drilled three pocket holes on both sides. To make sure it remains flush with the main beam, I attach the plywood against it. And I attach the horizontal beam against the plywood. Here I'm doing the same thing but on the other side. Okay, I'm going to work on the top part of my wall oven. It's going to have uh, two doors over there. Um, <coughs> I need to uh, create a wood frame, first of all, where I can after put my uh, laminates either on the walls, on the side, on the back, on the bottom. So I'm going to take some measurements and set up the, the frame For the bottom, I want the melamine to be flush with the bottom beam. So I screw a piece of melamine to my 2x3 and use that as a reference. With one side in place, I use my lever to attach the other side.
For the centerpiece, I'm using the same technique. And I repeat the process for the other side. Fine. So I'm going to put a vertical one and on a vertical I'm going to put the horizontal one on the bottom. And when that is done, technically it's good to go for putting melamine. So the idea I had here is I don't want to put any scrum. So the idea I had is I'm going to put one laminate against here and it's going to be all on the bottom by the uh, bottom, bottom laminate. The uh, same thing on this side. So it's going to be just tight, tight fit, hang over there and I don't need to put any screw or anything. For the back, it's going to be the same thing. I have to have one bar, one laminate on the back and on the bottom, it's going to uh, keep it tight, and the top is going to keep the top tight, in theory. So, yep. And what I'm going to do is, if I need to go behind for any reason to check uh, this thing, or a trickle box, or anything, I'm going to let it all over there, put my finger, pop this one up, and I will be able to have access again over there. For if for any reason I need to. So let's take uh, measuring tape again. If you remember my project where I done a concrete countertop, here I'm actually reusing the melamine of the mold I done. One side is still dirty from the concrete, but the other side is still in good condition to be reused. Restoring an old house is often tried to make something look straight when everything else is not. For this situation between the melamine who has no straight line and some weird angle in my wall oven cabinet, I'm using my skier saw instead of my table saw.
When I cut all my melamine, I mark with a tape every piece to remember in what order and position every melamine goes. Put a like on the video if you think it is a good idea to interlock the melamine for not showing any screw and be able to have a quick access behind. Yeah, it should be good enough. I have to fix the ceiling and maybe put some trim on the top. And uh, that's it. I have to put a shelf. Like in between, and uh, that's going to be for later. So I get this kit here to make the ore for shelves over there. Um, it's not too bad, the only thing is they sell you this thing with this bit over there or it's for a quarter inch uh, or and uh, I don't know what kind of things use a quarter inch but so you have to reorder another one or it's for uh, uh, five millimeters that is a normal standard so it's pretty easy, you just put the thing against over there and that one goes in your Bits. Let me go too low. Let me start somewhere over there. Side. There's also an edge over there, so if you, you can also put it that way if you want to. Uh, not edge over there, I put it that way. And you can do it from this side as well. I am reusing the same technique used in the upper cabinets to attach flush the wood to the beam.
So, um, here I need uh, the plywood to be flush here, because I'm going to put the uh, slide for the doors, like this one is nice and flush. So what I've done here is I already, already cut some piece of plywood, about 3 8 It's going to be a tiny little bit bigger than what I need. That should not be too big. There you go. Like almost flush. So now I can cut. Uh, I'm going to back in something I don't know earlier on there. And uh, some, somewhere over there, I think. And uh, yeah, it's going to be good to go. This is the end of this uh, video. I'm hoping I will be able to post the last video of the Finnish kitchen before starting the next project, which is going to be about redoing the driveway. I still have a few things to do before showing the finished product, but I don't know if I will have enough time to do it. Meanwhile, watch my other videos to catch up on what I did in this kitchen, and don't forget to subscribe and like the video.